So hello DevConf, uh, welcome to the presentation Keep Your Secret Secret, Kerberos for Java Developers. Uh, this will be presentation about really old stuff. Yeah. The last presentation you heard now was about new Quarkus and this is about old Kerberos. Let's start with a few words about me. I'm a former Red Hot currently working as security engineer in Hazelcast. Yeah, we are making uh, open source in-memory data grid and a streaming engine. Uh, I love running long distances. I have four children and also I like contribute to, to open source because it's better to share. Uh, we will talk about some Kerberos basics and how can we use Kerberos in Java. Uh, I will show you some tooling about, around it and uh, you can also find the slides for the presentation on this uh, address. So let's start with a question. Are you using Kerberos authentication? Every Red Hat is using so I will uh, Ask opposite, who is not using Kerberos authentication? Is there anybody? One, two? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. And uh, the second question, who knows JAS authentication in JAS API in Java? It's standard Java API for authentication. One, not many. I thought that it will be more. Okay, nevertheless. And, uh, Anybody tried to play with Kerberos authentication in Java? Yeah, one, nice. So let's start with some basics. Uh, Kerberos protocol is a network authentication protocol developed on MIT in late 80s. And Kerberos is a name of uh, Greek beast, free-headed dog, and uh, yeah, we also have three roles in the Kerberos protocol, and three main roles are key distribution center, which is the Kerberos server, client, and the service. And Kerberos, from its beginning, is used for single sign-on, and what's, the, what's important, secrets are not sent over the network. So it's authentication without send, sending passwords over the network. Yeah, and the last RFC, which is real uh, Kerberos specification, version 5 is from 2005, I think, and it's RFC 4120. So, as I've already mentioned, passwords are not sent over the network and tickets are used instead. Uh, the protocol supports delegation of identity or client can say to, to the server that it can forward its identity to another server. So some middle tier, some gateway can impersonate the client and say, for example, if client is through an application server connecting to database, the, to the database you can authenticate using Kerberos with, with the user identity, not the application server identity. And uh, server doesn't need to talk to uh, Kerberos server. Uh, to authenticate clients. Yeah, What's, what can cause problem in Kerberos protocol? Uh, first one is the time. Uh, yeah, it's very sensitive to t uh, clock synchronization. For example, if your client and server uh, has uh, clocks set more than five, uh, five minutes yeah, the, the clock skew is more than five minutes, then the client will not be able to authenticate to the server. Another problem can be in the KDC. If it's not for any reason access accessible, client 
is not able to retrieve ticket from the, serv from the Kerberos server, from the KDC, and it's not possible to authenticate, to prove the client identity to the server. So KDC is a single point of failure. And some parts or some implementations are also very sensitive to host name handling. So in, in some services, there is host name, uh, host name canonicalization, and if it is not handled properly, the authentication again will fail because server will expect something another than the client sends. Yeah. Uh, I've already mentioned that instead of passwords is used a ticket. It's, a, it's some data structure which is partly encrypted, so only small piece of information is, uh, is in plain text, and yeah, when client sends, uh, sends uh, the ticket to the, to the server, only the server name and its realm or domain uh, only this information is not encrypted, the rest of the ticket is encrypted. So client name and session key, which is used then for symmetric cryptography between client and the server. And of course, the ticket usually has limited validity, for example, 10 hours or one day. So the protocol looks like this. First, client goes to key distribution center and authenticates to it. Second, client wants to go to some service, to some server, so it first go to KDC, key distribution center, and asks, give me a ticket for the server, for the service, and if uh, the KDC agrees, it sends back to the ticket, and the client presents the ticket uh, to the server. Let's look into it in detail. So, first step, protocol is going to authenticate to the, to the KDC. The important thing, thing is the, all the parties or the, all the entities, all the principles in, in the uh, in the Kerberos domain, has to share with KDC its, its secret, its, its password, or, or a secret key. So yeah, they both know the passwords, but the password is not sent over the network. So yeah, uh, first step. Uh, hello, KDC, IMC. I don't encrypt anything. Just give me a ticket to access you the next time for the second, second step. And uh, yeah, KDC looks into a database of the users and says, yeah, I know you, here is, here is the ticket, and it's encrypted by secret key which is generated from the passwords which we both know. And inside the ticket is a session key which is used then for next communication uh, with the KDC. So in the first step, the, the information in the replay is encrypted by secret key, long-term secret key, key uh, generated from password. But the second step, which we will show now, the second step uh, is encrypted by session key, which was presented uh, to, the, uh, to the client in the, in the first step. So in the second step, we are we already have the ticket to access the KDC, and now we, we ask for another ticket to access a server, a service. So again, I'm going to KDC and asking, give me please ticket for, for the service, and I can prove my identity by giving you this, uh, this ticket from previous step, and also, I am attaching an, a piece of information called authenticator, which proves that I know the session key 
which is also part of the ticket. The ticket can decrypt only the receiving side. So in this case, only the, only the KDC. And yeah, if it agrees to, to give me a ticket for, for the target service, then it creates new ticket and encrypts it by the, by the secret key of the target service. So the client can't read the encrypted information from the ticket. Only the target services can, read, can decrypt the ticket. Yeah, so if, uh, if the client successfully received the ticket, it can go to the target service, to the server, and say, yeah, here am I, your client, I prove my identity by sending you this ticket, which yeah, you can decrypt. And I also attach a piece of information, again, the authenticator, which is valid for these five minutes, uh, encrypted by session key, and server receives the session key in the ticket. So yeah, no password is sent over the network, but in every step, uh, Every party knows the piece of information which it needs to, to decrypt the, the thing. So that was about the, about the protocol basics. And now something about tooling. Yeah, question. It's a very good. It's a very good question. The question was, when when the client in the first step uh, sends the request to the to the server and says IMC, how can server validate it? It doesn't need to validate it, yeah, because it sends back the information, which is for client is encrypted by the client's secret key generated from password. And it's, it also sends the ticket, ticket granting ticket, to uh, yeah, which is encrypted by the service uh, service secret key. So, so who authenticates the, the client? The authenticate. Yeah, if it can decrypt the session key, which is used for the next communication, then it's proof that he, the client is the client. <laughs> yeah, uh, the thing is, uh, there is extension usually used nowadays, which uh, prevents some brute force attacks by pre-authentication. So if the client sends this plain request, yeah, I'm client, give me my ticket, uh, then Kerberos responds with Kerberos error, and client has to prove that he is the client by sending uh, the, the data encrypted with his secret key. So he has to repeat the request and include some authentication data yeah, with Okay, so yeah, as a majority of you uh, already met uh, Kerberos, uh, Kerberos in your job, you, you know these tools, Knit, Klist, KeyDestroy, there is also uh, KVNO which uh, can uh, retrieve for you some service ticket, Kadmin for administration of local user, user base, yeah, in, in Kerberos. On Windows, the native tool is KList from this, but uh, its ability, it has ability to, to work also as a key destroy. Unfortunately, on Windows, there is no key in it. 
but uh, there is Active Directory module in PowerShell, which you can somehow also use for K in it. Once you import this module into the PowerShell, it behaves like key in it. Servers, the standard ones, MIT Kerberos, Microsoft Active Directory, Heimdall. Uh, on Windows, yeah, I've mentioned there is no K in it natively. So Java runtime on Windows, when you download uh, Oracle Java or uh, other Java version, then you will find in bin directory K in it and K list, which you can use to yeah, replace the native tools. And it also have a key tab a tool, which can create you a key tab, which holds secret key, secret keys, uh, with for different encryption types. So you can you can say in key tab that for principal, for example, client, the the secret key in these encryption types are are these entries. So it can be reused later and the secret keys doesn't need to be generated from the password. Uh, standard conf configuration file on Linux is etc kerb5.conf and what's the most important is the realms part where you list your Kerberos realms and where the key distribution center lives. So it's the most important information from the configuration point of view. There are also Java implementations of KDC and uh, both of which I mentioned here are from Apache directory project which is old project, probably you, you, you heard about it. It's, it's uh, directory, the, the Apache DS, which is yeah, the, the old project, is, is directory service, uh, which has some uh, LDAP endpoint, and it also provides Kerberos access. Uh, the advantage of running KDC in Java is that you can embed it into your tests, into your environment, and uh, for example, testing is very simplified when, when you yeah, can start, uh, start within your test, the KDC, or test, test your application against it, shut down it, and that's it. So, uh, I've already mentioned uh, the Apache Kirby is newer one. It, I think, first release was 2017. Maybe development on Apache project started on 2015, first released 2017, and now we have version 2.0, and the usage is really simple. Start simple server for me, and yeah, once I do this, I, I have also administration interface, I have tooling for creating key tabs, and yeah, it's, it's really simple to, to start with KDC. The older one, Apache DS, which is, for example, used in Wildfly test suite, uh, uses annotations uh, to, to, define, uh, to define work, or you can use also the API in similar way to, to the Apache Kirby. The problem with Apache DS project, it's old and it's, its development is really slow. Yeah, because last, last de deployed or last released version, uh, which was final, was 1.5.7 maybe, 
and it, it's before 2010. And in 2010, started work on version 2.0, and it's not completed yet. After 10 years, we still don't have a version 2.0. There is milestone 25 currently. Yeah, so let's switch to, to an IDE and look into a demo. And what we will show, yeah, we will try to look how, how, the, how the request and response looks like. I don't see my mouse, okay. So the code which I will use is just the simple Apache Kirby code which you already seen uh, on the slide. So let's run it and it says uh, Kerberos server has started. So now I can go to console and run K in it and choose one of the the duke should be the password there yeah. and now again yeah, I've received a ticket granting ticket I forgot to start the Wireshark so once again So let's listen, let's capture the communication on port 10,080. The default port of Kerberos servers is 8080. But because of Java, I would need uh, yeah, root permissions. Then, be, therefore, I, I started on 10,080. So it's listening and let's destroy it. Let's check, yeah. no credential cache, and once more, K init, password the Duke. I have uh, the ticket granting ticket, and if I look into the, into the Wireshark network analyzer, I can see yeah, there is some authentication request and response. And now I can go back and ask, ask for service ticket. I have a service which is called GSS test slash localhost. And now when I list the tickets, yeah, in my credential cache is GSS test localhost. So by this K in it and K V N O, I've made the first two, two steps in the Kerberos protocol. So ask for the ticket granting ticket, first step, ask for service ticket, second step. And so the authentication Okay, so the authentication request, as we talk about it, was really the simple, hey, I am, I am Jay Duke, give me my ticket to access you in the, in the second step. So in the, in the response, I've received ticket and uh, encrypted session key. So the ticket is encrypted by, by the KDC secret key and the session key or information for the client are encrypted with the client secret key. Yeah, 
Yeah, and similar, similarly, it goes for the second communication ticket granting service request, where the only difference is I don't send plain plain request only. I attach to the uh, to the request also the ticket from the first step. That's it. So, how to work with it in, in Java? Uh, I was asking about the, who knows the JAS API because uh, the, what you need to know is that, uh, to, that the working with, with Kerberos in standard, standard Java starts in login module, which is, yeah, implementation of JAS API. Uh, fortunately, you don't need to implement login module yourself, but vendors has a login module already prepared for you. Uh, they differ a little bit in Oracle and IBM world, but most of the options are, are similar or the same. So you just need to put the correct class name into, the, into your JAS configuration. So JAS configuration can look like a simple text file where you put some name, which will you, you will reference from your application, and uh, into, into the configuration, you, you just mentioned the class name, the flag, for example, if it is required or sufficient or requ requisite. Uh, it only matters if you have more login module in the stack, then, then the second parameter is important. And login module options, in this case, debug true. Uh, and now, once we created the named configuration in our in our application, we can simply do things think like this. Use the JAS API to create login context, which references the name configuration from the config file, call login, and get JAS subject, which will probably, if the authentication succeeded, which will contain the ticket granting ticket. So by finishing these few lines, we finished first step of the Kerberos protocol. We received the ticket granting ticket from KDC. Uh, yeah, I've mentioned that uh, the normal location of of the Kerberos 5 configuration file is in etc, kerb5.conf, but we have Java property to override it. Or you can place the kerb5.conf into your Java runtime uh, folder uh, where the config configuration is, is stored, security configuration is stored, so it takes precedence over the, over the native one in the etc. You can also uh, play, with, play with it without providing kerb5.conf and just setting the realm name and address of the KDC directly as a system properties. The problem is the javas.security.kerb5.kdc doesn't support the port, uh, port specification. So I couldn't use it in my example. And there are some, uh, there are some uh, properties which will print some debug information, what's happening inside. We will see more of them later when we will talk about GSS API. Yeah, GSS API is on the next slide. And it's, 
another standard API, a generic security service application programming interface. Yeah. It is a framework, framework which itself doesn't implement some security features, but it provides uniform API to access underlying security mechanisms which you plug into it. So it's similar to TLS. TLS itself, it's just a framework. And you are forced to specify Cypher Suite, which does the security stuff for the TLS protocol, for the TLS framework. So this is very similar. You have GSS API, and you have to plug some implementation, secu some security mechanism into it. And in our case, we want to plug into it the Kerberos protocol. Yeah. So Kerberos is probably the most used, the mechani most used mechanism for GSS API. And yeah, because of the GSS API, we have standardized way to, to work with, with Kerberos. Uh, yeah, the problem is Kerberos implementations may differ, uh, may be different, and uh, they don't provide a single, uh, single some standard, standardized API to to work with. So therefore, GSS API is a safe way to work with Kerberos protocol because you use one standardized API. Yeah, and together with Kerberos, you can also meet uh, another specification or another API or another whatever. Uh, it's called SPNego, and simple and protected GSS API negotiation mechanism. And it's nothing else than a pseudo mechanism which allows you, if for example, client and server supports multiple, uh, multiple security protocol, multiple security mechanisms, then GSS API itself doesn't provide ability to, uh, yeah, to negotiate which mechanism will be used. So therefore, uh, the SPNGO was created and it provides this ability. It can say, I support this list of uh, this list of mechanism, and I'm sending tickets to to you server. Pick one, and we can communicate in the mechanism you will choose. So it's for example used for Kerberos uh, authentication in web browsers. Yeah, if if you know uh, if you use uh, Kerberos in in your web applications you are prob probably working through the SPNGO. And let's look to some pictures. GSS API has two phases. First is some loops of initialization when clients start communication with some init security context call, and as a result, there is some byte array as a token. The token is sent to the server. It calls accept sec context server, accept sec, sec context, and again, the, the result is byte array, and they can loop by sending the byte array tokens one to each other. And once the one side decide, yeah, the context is initialized, they, they can start with the second round and it's message transport. And it's very similar to what you may know from SSL engine. On one side you, you call wrap and put some byte array into it and the, you again get token as a result. You, you send the tokens to the other side. The other side calls unwrap and yeah, they, they will communicate uh, in this protected manner.
GSS API binding in for Java uh, has its own RFC, so it's standardized, standardized, and uh, you can find the GSS API in the package org.itf.jgss, and there are few main classes which you should know about if you want to work with GSS API. Entry point to the, to the API is GSS Manager, which is fact, factory for GSS context, GSS name, and GSS credentials. GSS context is the security context, yeah, which holds the state. GSS name, name represents name of the party, for example, name of the client, name of the service. GSS credential represents credential of, of the party. And there are some additional, some additional classes, message properties, where you can define, uh, for example, that you want the next message to be encrypted. Uh, so, by default, uh, GSS API in Java retrieves Kerberos stuff, Kerberos credentials, from just subject. We, we saw the first step of the protocol by using Kerb5 login module, which fills the just subject with the proper stuff for GSS API. But if you don't care about the JAS, you also can use the GSS API without uh, yeah, doing the JAS stuff. You, you, just to defi you just have to define uh, some JAS configuration in exactly named uh, configuration yeah, uh, entry, uh, either initiate for the client side or ac accept for server side, and then the GSS API does the first step in the Kerberos, Kerberos protocol for, for you automatically. You will also need to define additional system property for it. Uh, short mentioned about uh, Kerberos and Java on Windows. If you have Windows Workstation connected to a to a Active Directory domain. Once you log in with an account which is registered in the domain, you automatically have the ticket granting ticket. So it's similar as if you log in into your Linux machine and do K in it just after the login. And Java is able to access the, this ticket granting ticket, but you have to allow it first in the, uh, in the Windows registries. And I've already mentioned the workaround for, uh, by importing the module Active Directory, workaround for missing native K in it. If you want to play with Windows environment and you don't want to install Windows and you have a Microsoft Azure account, there is one simple and nice template uh, which you just click a button and it opens Microsoft Azure environment and starts for you to our free machines. It depends if you want also some client machine or, or the Active Directory one and the server is enough for you. And now let's compare Kerberos with transport layer, layer security, which you use daily, on a daily basis in, for example, HTTPS. Both provides you client-server authentication, but here's a difference. By default, TLS authenticate, in TLS uh, protocol, the client verifies that the server is really the server 
it expects. In Kerberos protocol, it's opposite. The, the server verifies that the client is the client it, which should be. So yeah, but both of them support mutual authentication. So when, once you enable mutual authentication, both parties has to authenticate to each other. Uh, both provides encryption and data integrity checks and data structures are described in abstract syntax notation uh, dot one and it's abstract syntax notation and for example if you have uh, if you have uh, TLS certificates uh, you can you can read the structure of it because they are encoded in the ASN one and I can show you how can it look like. For example, I, as we saw the, uh, the Kerberos request, the Kerberos request, uh, the first step, and in abstract syntax notation, the dump of it could be like this, uh, some uh, Kerberos version number and then another, uh, another data described in, in this data structure. And to, to understand what's included, uh, what should be included and what is included, you can look into, into the RFC yeah, related to, to the topic. So in our case, it would be uh, authentication request, and in the Kerberos RFC, you would find yeah, uh, the, the proper structure of, of the data object. The difference between Kerberos and TLS. Kerberos usually used for single sign-on. Once you get the ticket granting ticket, you, you don't care anymore for any authentication. Everything is automatically uh, on the background. Credentials delegation only supported in the Kerberos. So I've already mentioned it. If you have some middle server, middle tier, it can impersonate the, ser the client and go to the target server with identity of the client. Usually TLS is socket-based and API and Kerberos is token-based. So, and because yeah, it's token-based, you can use selective encryption and say yeah, this message will be encrypted this message will not be encrypted, and for this message, we will only use some uh, message integrity checks. And Kerberos, by default, supports UDP and TCP, and TLS, default TLS, is just TCP. The problem of the Kerberos is the KDC single point, point of failure and TLS doesn't have these problems. Yeah. I've already shown you that great tool for analyzing the Kerberos pro protocol is Wireshark. Yeah, you can use it together with TCP dump. And uh, you can dump uh, uh, abstract syntax notation uh, structures which dump ASN or the Kerby provides API to, to do, do the same, to parse abstract syntax notation one data structures. Uh, yeah, I'm listing here some properties to debug GSS API and, and let's go on. Okay, now I want to share with you an example how to employ uh, the 
the Kerberos authentication into some client server application which doesn't support Kerberos, but which, which supports JAS authentication. So the client needs to do this first step using Kerb5 login module, then using the GSS API and initializing the con security context, we will do the second step. And from the second step, we will get the ticket which we will send to the server and it will accept the ticket. So the, the third step will be on the server side. Yeah, the, and on the server side to, to finish this, uh, we also need to initialize, initialize the subject because the server needs to decrypt the, the ticket, but the server doesn't need to talk to KDC. So we will use the CARB5 login module in the offline mode or in the mode which doesn't contact KDC. So, because I work for Hazelcast, my, my demo will be on Hazelcast MDG. Yeah. Hazelcast is in memory data grid, and it just creates cluster of servers, and clients are accessing data stored in this cluster, and we use standard Java data structures for example, Java Util Map, Java Util Set, and data in, in these data structures are, are stored in the cluster. The problem is uh, the security feature is not part of the open source version, but uh, if you look into the demo, into the demo uh, GitHub project, there is some evalu evaluation license included, so you can play with it. And usual sample code for, for, for a Hazelcast is in it for me, either client or the server, for get from the instance some, for example, map, Java Util map, and use the map as a cache. And it doesn't uh, matter if, if the, server, if the uh, code which uh, runs this, for example, your client, if it finishes the JVM and starts new, the data will be stored somewhere on the cluster, so if you run this again, you, you will have access to the data which you stored into, into the data structure. So the client code. We will use the automate way, so we will not touch subject in our client application, but we will just uh, define the GSS, GSS API uh, configuration. Now, the important part, we will need to do the second step and retrieve ticket for the first, first step of the Kerberos protocol. So, what we need to do, yeah, manager, GSS manager, entry point. From GSS manager, we create name of the target server or target service and we are creating context for the target name. We don't request mutual authentication because only client says, hey, I am the client. So the, the client doesn't need to verify that the server is really the server. And we can call the context initialization because it is Kerberos protocol and we don't ask for mutual authentication, we know that now the, after the first call of init sec context, uh, the context is fully initialized and we can directly send the token. So we have the token and this last piece of, uh, of the code is Hazelcast specific you just create a client configuration and in security configuration, we provide the byte array token as, a, as our credentials. 
and we start the Hazelcast client. On server side, again, uh, we are using standard API, and on server side, we need to implement JAS login module. So in, in the JAS login module, server is sending the token, and JAS login module has to be able to consume the token and provide it to GSS context created on server side, and the server side calls accept token, and if it is correctly accepted, we can get the client name and finish successfully, and that's it. So that's all you need on the server side. You can find the demo uh, in the GitHub project, demo Kerberos in Java. I can, I can open it here. So we have already the, the server started. And now if you look into Hazelcast, Hazelcast package, there is the login module. Login is pretty the same as you saw on the, on the slide. Uh, there are other, other just login module method, methods which needs to be yeah, provided, but uh, there is no important logic. The only important is in the commit method, you need to fill the names or the sub, you, you need to convert the names to, to principles and fill the subject with the new principles. In our case, we provide some identity as some hard-coded role. That's it, that's it. And here, yeah, this is just Hazelcast-related code. We are starting Hazelcast instance with some configuration, and in the configuration, the important part is we are defining security through the new custom login module. So if we run this, it should be started, and if, you, if we look into the client, I already said that the, the first step of client of Kerberos protocol will be automatical, so we have to use this system property, and we start with the second step. So again, GSS API, and yeah, we saw it in the, in the slide, providing the token into client configuration, and now just some Kerberos, uh, some Hazelcast client code. So yeah, we are getting some map and putting current time into it. Under some case, so if I run it, there should be some message somewhere. Yeah, I, I'm looking on the server side, so I have to look into the client. This is the first run of the client application. If I run it again, then last client application run was, so on the server, uh, the data are stored on the server and client accesses through standard Java util map, the, the, data, the data on the server and stores a, a new data. And of course, it does the JAS authentication in the meantime. Yeah, each, each Hazelcast client creation means communication with, with the server. So I think that's it, and yeah, you can find some resources uh, in my slides, and that's it, thank you.